When is an aperture of two not really a two? Well, when the F number doesn't match the T number. Photographic cameras are generally measured in F, F2.8, F4, whereas cinema lenses are normally measured in T. Today I want to explain what the difference is. In case you don't know, one of the controls you have over the exposure in your camera is your aperture. And the aperture is normally measured in photography circles in terms of f-stops. And it's determined by the size of the diameter of the circle that the blades of the lens allow how much light they allow to come through. And we talk about f2.8, f2, f1.4, f8, all of these different numbers which signify a certain amount of light. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's how much light is getting to your sensor. The difference between an f-stop and a t-stop is, an f-stop is measured at the size of the opening at the front of the lens, and that's easy to measure. A t-stop is a bit trickier to measure. It's actually how much light, having passed through the aperture, through the elements in the lens, how much actually gets to your sensor. And that's something different because you do lose some light along the way. For people who are into cars, an analogy could be measuring horsepower at the flywheel or measuring it at the wheel. Once it's gone through the system, how much is there practically being put onto the ground? It's exactly the same with aperture. All the different lenses inside, or glass elements we call lenses, that are inside the overall lens that you're using, do steal a little bit of light. Reflections steal a little bit of light. It's actually impossible to have a 100% transmission ratio. So even the best coded lenses that ref, you know, eliminate reflections and all of those things will still steal a little bit of light. Whether or not it's enough to really make a difference, it will steal a little bit, but sometimes it steals a whole lot. I'm sure you would have seen product photos like this guy where they're showing beautiful detail inside the lens and whilst that's nice graphically and to show you the complexity of the lens, the fact that you can see all of those different lenses inside the lens body means that's a reflection and that's light that isn't passing through and hitting the sensor, so that's loss of light essentially because it's being bounced back at you. Okay, so even lenses like this beauty, the Canon 85 1.2, which you really can't see a whole lot in the way of lenses inside, and you're paying a whole lot of money for the 1.2, and it is a well-built lens, you're still losing some light on this. This one actually has a T value of 1.4. That means that even though it will open up in terms of aperture an F number of 1.2, you're losing 0.2 on the way through the lens and only 1.4 of light is coming out the other end. That is not to say that it affects the depth of field or the out of focus areas. That is actually affected directly to the size of the aperture opening. But the amount of light that's coming through that you have to work with in terms of your exposure, balanced with your shutter speed and ISO, that's T value. That's not to say, oh, well, if it's only giving me 1.4 of light, I might as well just buy the 1.4, because of course the 1.4s lose light as well. For example, the legendary Sony Planar 85mm f1.4 actually has a T-value of 1.6. You see, I went to the DxO website there, they have a whole bunch of lenses reviewed there where they can give you the T-value that's actually been measured. So let me just run through a couple of ones for you. Okay, a god of a lens, the Nikon 70-200 f2.8, actually has a T-value of 3.3, so you're losing quite a bit of light going through that one. That's not to say that it's the worst on the market, though, in the high-end ones. The Canon 70-200 2.8 has a T-value of 3.4, and in a rare moment of you get more than what you pay for, actually, the Tamron, the new guy, the VC, 2.8 has a T-value of 3.2, beating both the Canon and the Nikon. The new and super expensive Canon 24-70 version 2 2.8 has a T-value of 3, whereas the Tamron 24-70 2.8 with VC, which is half the price literally, has a T-number of 2.8. So as I said, you can't have 100% transmission, but it was insignificant enough that they didn't need to change it, the T to the F. A few more slightly esoteric lenses, my 105 f2D lens, quite an old lens from Nikon. This has a T-value of 2.1, so still really good. The Samyang 35mm f1.4 has a T-value of 1.7, it is really cheap though. Looking at the Zeiss Distagon, however, which is by no means a cheap lens, that one, also a 1.4 in terms of f-number, 
is also a 1.7 in terms of T number. And the Sigma, the new kid on the block, the 35 1.4 that's blowing everyone's minds, it blows them both to kingdom come with a T number of just 1.5. So that may give you an idea why some of the cinema lenses, which are generally measured in T numbers rather than F numbers like cam photographic cameras, why those cinema lenses can cost so much. Comparing the Canon 85mm F1.2, that's two, two and a half thousand dollars. The T1.3 is $5,000, so more than double, but that's a 1.3T, and we know that the 1.2 actually has a T of 1.4. So its F number is significantly bigger than 1.2, or the glass and the way it's been designed just has a much higher transmission ratio. On top of that, they have uh, de-clicked apertures, so you can smoothly adjust your aperture, and a huge throw on the focus ring, so then you can make minute adjustments really smoothly in video. So there you go. Feel free to jump on the DxO and run through and see what all of your different lenses do in terms of performance of transmission of light. And you may want to keep that in mind if you're going from one lens to another and that there's some variation there, you're shooting in manual or on film or whatever, it may not be a lot, but sometimes that's half a stop that we're talking about. Right? Leave me any questions or comments. I'll see you soon.